This is Mr. Kelly. Uh, I'm just here to talk to you about A-level history. Uh, hopefully some of you will be interested in what is a really fascinating course. It's split into two parts, the making of a superpower, USA, 1865 to 1975, uh, the making of modern Britain, 1951 to 2007. There's also um, a historical investigation, which is a bit like an extended piece of coursework, and that's based upon the causes of the French Revolution. Um, we do require a six in GCSE history and a five in English, and that's mainly because the course is so uh, essay based. Um, you really do need a good grasp of basics in history uh, and, and good English, and otherwise, sorry, in order to be able to communicate your ideas perfectly. The Make of the Modern Britain course uh, is, as it says, it's a very modern course. It begins in 1951, just after um, World War II, the creation of the national health and the welfare state, and it basically looks at Britain's realisation that this is going to cost us an awful lot of money uh, and again with the realisation that we're perhaps not the world player that we once used to be. Uh, it goes through all of those things there, the, the 1960s, uh, the post-war consensus which was a period when political parties were very similar and believed in similar things. Towards Margaret Thatcher who you can see there in the bottom who was a very divisive figure right the way through to Tony Blair and New Labour and this idea, and they'll investigate really the idea that um, was traditional Labour lost at that point and what kind of uh, impact did Tony Blair and New Labour have. In uh, the American part of the course, we're sort of sandwiched between two of the biggest wars in American history, 1865, the end of the Civil War, 1975, the end of the Vietnam War. We begin with a period of reconstruction following that Civil War, the freedom of the slaves, um, the 13th, 14th, 15th amendments to the Constitution to try and guarantee civil liberties. And we'll look at how and why uh, that perhaps failed. Populism, progressivism and imperialism are all parts of American foreign policy and sort of part of the um, political psyche, if you like, and the idea of progressive ideas versus conservative ideas, etc. And we look at America's uh, crisis and, and the rise to world power, the identity crisis that America went through in the 1860s and uh, all the way through to the 1900s in the Gilded Age, really, um, investigating how they rose to become the world power that we recognize today. The assessment is very straightforward. There are two exams, one for the British course, one for the American course. There are three um, essays on each exam. Uh, they're with 40% each, so a total of 80%. Um, and the historical investigation on the French Revolution is worth 20% uh, of the final mark. Uh, the format of the course is uh, essay-based, and so therefore there's an obvious focus on extended written work, on accurate and independent note-taking, and of course, essay writing. The next few slides, um, you can pause the, the presentation, look through it, gives you a little bit more detail on what we're looking for and what we're looking at in the course itself. Uh, there's some of the themes that we'll look at in the course. And obviously, there's a, a big focus upon social issues as well as political and foreign policy issues. The same for the British course. Um, you will see there, again, some more detailed divisions of what you can expect to study um, as you go through the British course. And finally, of course, the big question is, is what can you do once you've studied history? Well, as well as the obvious in terms of education, you'll see that a lot of people with history degrees going to, to study law. They're going to publish in the media research. Uh, there's a massive market out there for historical um, TV programs and films. So, you know, these, these things all have uh, production managers and researchers and things like that. There's hospitality, tourism, the public sector, consultancy. There's a vast array of jobs that um, look for people that have good research skills uh, and good written communication skills. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to come and contact us and have a chat about it. And we look forward to seeing some of you on the A-Level History course.